matchup is against Systematics playing Soren. Uh, we have pretty good matchups, especially with hands like this. The recent addition of Invoke the Dawn gets us a cool interaction with spawning Arrow 1 and giving us a 1-4, thus making our Paragons just even crazier. Really important with the Jace matchups because you have a bunch of 3-3 three, three walls, but here, same thing, our guys are just going to be bigger. Here, I decide to just go with the Paragon. We're way ahead right now. He can take 16 damage if he wants, but trades are good here. And we're still in a very good spot with Divine Smite for backup going the next turn. Yep. Good game. This next matchup is against Vincero uh, Clan, clanmate of mine very good player from South Korea. So against other Gideon decks, it's just all about making good trades and getting to your aura before they do. So we kept a decent hand. I'm basically just gonna try to outlast what, what they're doing. Turn, he drops his steed. We can definitely play around his divine smite. Or trade for that, but he doesn't want to. Okay. So I think we're just gonna play our trap here. Maybe we'll attack first to prevent his Gideon next turn. He doesn't take the bait. It's fine. We'll just play our trap. The reason why I didn't play the steed there is because I don't want to play in divine smite and here we will have three three creature cards. That match up decently against his stuff. We get the Captain proc. You're gonna see that stuff proc a lot in, in the games coming up. Really like that card. Just for stuff like this. So now, you know, we have more more creatures to mess around with. Option is playing Paragon here, but I wanna get more value from the Thraven Sentry and the Faithful Steed in my hand. So we're just gonna go ahead and tag here get his guys down, get more value from our Paragon coming up. And here we can drop two cards. We're gonna play the Steed buff on something else because it's probably gonna get Divine Smited. That's what I'm thinking. And here we can trade for like the 3-1. We want a one drop and then we can drop like the Paragon and then even up the board and have a bigger creature. Perfect. We don't want to show him that we have the one card. Maybe adjust his blocks. He's not going to block, of course. So we're looking pretty good here. Guys, gonna stun my Thraven. It's fine. Okay, we were gonna block, but we're not gonna block. I don't think he wants to attack. It will take two damage. Here we have the decision of just getting rid of the 2 2 flyer, but getting another creature on board might be better this turn. A big fatty. Bait out his aura of courage so we can do some decent blocks. Okay, so we went with that. Yep. Next turn we can either hit the Geist or the or the three five rookie. Might hit the the Geist just because it's a flyer and we're down to six damage. It's kind of scary. So we did withdraw one drop, which is good. Deciding here if I want to kill the rookie or not. And I don't we'll get the orb of courage in my hand. We'll get the proc, which doesn't proc because Gideon takes the fifth, the fifth slot, which is unfortunate. 
However, we do have the two on that gives us the steed so we can buff something else. Here we want to put it on the, the captain, the veteran. I forget his name every time just so we can block the, the buff to Brookie next turn at five health. I guess a training yard prompt that's always scary. Stoneforge Mystic. So it's gonna probably buff his rookie. No, it doesn't. Yes, he does. Okay, so now our block is kind of messed up, which is fine. So this is a lot of damage. We're just gonna try to lose the least amount of creatures. That way we can swing back. So this is where blocks are very important. Block here. Take them. <laughs> Go down to one. And he has to drop a creature or else. Definitely gonna take some damage. GG Vincero. We get luckily matched up against number one player from last season and the season before Yugen. This is actually a variation of his build. He had a, a very aggressive build that really preyed upon the, the J stacks with the Paragon combo. Here he's playing Rao. These are the type of games you have to win if you want to get higher on the ladder. You just gotta. You can't lose your win streaks, especially when you're pushing ladder. Rao's a a decent matchup, you know, depending what they draw, I feel like they can they can just go off. But, you know, in this meta, I think we're gonna be okay, especially with this this version. Okay, so we have a lot of creatures that do don't do any damage and he has a thing and ice. So we're just gonna try to put some pressure on the board. What's cool is these are armored armored characters, so you know it'll eat any any uh, direct damage first. Stuff like Chain Lightning is, you know, using the charge on that too, so. We're expecting something here, some sort of bounce. Oh, he just gets a divination, that's fine. Like I said, again, we get one of those veteran procs, which is nice. Divine Smite to the face, get some damage in. So now we have a lot of pressure going in. If we get the aura, it's pretty good. Now we drop Captain. Okay, all right. Pretty good drop. Now we have two two drops that we can mess around with. Here I probably want to buff the one one just so it trades with the three two if he wants to block that. Give him the option. When you block the shield, yep. We just drop another one three. Okay, that's going to be very hard to deal with for for Rao. All right, so he's going to try to proc here. Looks like he's going to try to go off and go for the Lucky Chaos Lightning. Been there before. Double Mana Surge. Okay, we're just trying to build up his his spell count. Okay, Tinker, do the same thing, okay, <laughs> I feel like he's going off right now, okay, so that was, we got real lucky here, he doesn't know what I have, but he thinks I have an aura for the win, kind of premature on that, that quit, because I don't know if I would have drawn it, okay, we're opening him, but we, we mulligan into some, some early pressure against Chase. It's kind of the big thing you need to do against Chase is just get some stuff on the board, break through his walls, figure out some kind of combination with what you have and work to a, a win condition in the form of fair fight or, you know, just going off before they they go off. So we draw the fair fight. What we want to do is just get our board wide so we can take advantage of it. Play the dog so we can fit in the second two one, and if we get a divine smite, it gives us little options in the next turn. That's 
fine. We don't draw the divine smite, so we'll buff up the 2-1 to get him to block. We lost the block, take it. Fine, it opens up the, the way for next turn. Okay. That's a pretty good draw for him. I think we're just gonna drop the two three ones. I really like the Sun Empire's problem because these things just work well with fair fight. Okay, so he's tapped out again. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fair fight. Still having to use the Divine Smite, so that's good. Yeah, that's fine. You're still taking a lot of damage. It's pretty good. Uh, that's the Mind of Gate, so probably save that for a little bit. I think we just need to get dudes back on the board. Threaten some kind of lethal. So this is kind of like the, the tipping point, right? This is where Jace can start to go up. We probably have a turn, maybe two. He does have Ice Manipulator. Kills our 3 so figure it out. We gotta attack into, into this. Just to set up next turn lethal. And then we'll have negate back up just to disrupt any of his trying to go off. Boom, we're in a good spot here. He's gotta do something. Tries to plot, it's not gonna be enough. That's pretty much game because you can't do anything from that. Hold on, it's GG, OP. I have another Gideon Mirror versus Captain. Same strategy as before. Just make good make good trades. And kinda hopefully catch them when uh, when we can turn the tides. Dropping a veteran. Supporter. I don't like to use my Fragile Gem in these matchups just because I like to save it for maybe like a big turn 3 or turn 4. If he wants to trade with any of this goodie, goods, yep, that's fine. Get his steed out. Better right now. Okay, so we got a lot of pressure on this too. Here I'm trying to decide if I want to use the Divine Smite on the 3 1. But I think it's probably just better to go wide and match his dudes for a block and then a counterattack. Okay, so it looks like he didn't draw the divine swing. It's good. Redeemer is very good in this matchup. Alright, so we dropped the, the fair fight. I'm probably gonna work our way into that. Here, I, did, I killed a 1 3 instead of the Redeemer, which might have been a mistake. However, we wanted to put pressure on him. Maybe we'll get like a good trade. We're good with any of his trades here. If he wants to go below, below three creatures that's fine we'll just have a one drop to support so it's a good good body yep it's fine okay that was a really good draw that was a really good draw and it got the the dawn buff too so we're gonna attack here first see if we can steal any trade. Probably not, which is fine. We'll just give him two extra damage and drop some decent sized creatures. So now our fair fight is set up. We're gonna find a good time to kind of drop that. Maybe if we get an aura, 
We want to play the aura before the fair fight. That way when we swing into it, they can only block with four fours while we have five fives. We have a, a Thraven in her hand, which is good. We can't lose our one fours here, so we're just gonna try to draw any blocks because we know fair fight's kind of gonna be our our win condition. So the strength and toughness doesn't really matter as much here. The one one's gonna die, but that's fine because we're gonna replace it with a, a Thraven anyway. getting some damage perfect so now we we can match up with his his uh shielded character shielded creature all right we give up his shield that's good We take a little damage here. Okay. More than hot. It's a really good proc. Just gives us another flyer just in case we need to block Regna. I'm not sure if I want to cast Fair Fight here just because he has more creatures and you know it's not gonna bode well for us and tack into a bunch of people. So I think we're gonna set up the aura first. And it'll give us a, a stronger attack next turn. I don't think they can kill us here on the swing bank, so we'll take a bit of damage. I decided to hold that back just, just so we can block if we need to block, because he's going to cast an aura here. This is his aura turn, yep. And like the other game, you just got to make good blocks. Make sure you have more creatures on board. The fair fight will, will do a lot. That's good. Now we go down to two. Fortunately, we don't get that proc. However, we attack with a bunch of five fives. Now he's forced to block. Because he takes five from anything and he has to block <laughs> everything else. Which is good. It's pretty lethal. Arowana and the Paragon of Balance. I still think we get there. Don't have enough blockers. GG. Final matchup here we have Ziva Zivex playing Vraska. Vraska, you just gotta be patient. You just gotta be patient playing against Vraska because they have just so much removal. So here, we're just planning for a long game. Hopefully, bait a lot of their removal out. Make some, some good trades. This is this match jumps. I give the, the advantage to Vraska. So here we buff that guy trying to get the trade for a 3 1. That's fine. We got a 3 1 2, dude. Drop pinpoint. We can't. Draw out an attack because our guys are kind of bigger than him, but we're gonna try to kill the creatures on our turn so he doesn't get any for the, the bonus draw cards or mana from the little pet. So here. Probably want to get the scorpion. Hopefully, he doesn't get too, too 
three spells on his turn. I don't attack with everything. We'll see what they want to trade with. That's fine, you draw one card. We still have Gideon attack next turn. If we end up with a guy, you have to use the fatal on this. Still have an attack. Pinpoint's pretty dead right now. We're just gonna try to apply some pressure. Some of his dudes will clear up the board for us. Fine. He's at 17. We're still we're still sitting at a good life total. Our hand is getting kinda short, but we're hoping for some Moreland procs. That's a dirty, dirty combo here playing Nebraska. He just clears out my hand. This is not looking good. Here's a 6 2 trade with everything, so we're just going to try to milk his HP. Get that Moreland Hound back into the, the Ardent Supporter, who's another creature. It's pretty good. Just attack with the 2-3. Now we have two flyers. Could put some pressure on them. Just gonna get to draw two cards from this. Grotesque, that's pretty good. To another merchant. Okay, so just gotta play our hand here. Oh. We'll lose two on the floor, but we're dealing a lot of damage. And we have another creature, so our Gideon has a chance to proc next turn if he stays alive. We have lethal on him right now, but knowing Nebraska, it's not over till it's over. All right, we just gotta play this to buff some guys up. These two flyers can now trade with the tree. I still think we attack. He can he can either block with the six three or the zero one. I'm gonna go with any of those trades. Pep talk was not expecting that. I don't know why he didn't block here, but I think you're able to block, but maybe he just wanted to get more value. Oh, because he knew he was going to draw a Venomous Archer, which is pretty backbreaking. That was a really good, a really good, really good uh, proc from the Cocoon. Okay, so we'll block the tree, but of course you have another pep talk, so now your HP is back up at 16, which is very scary. Now our flyers are are not good against his whatever he has. So my plan here is to maybe deck him try to draw out the block from the Venomous Archer. Just how am I gonna play this? I think we buff the flyer, yeah, so it all trades. Okay, Savant. Incapacitate. It's pretty good. We're still at a decent life total and there's no big creatures on board for him just yet. Don't want to show him the griffin just yet. We 
decide not to attack. We're gonna definitely need to work on clearing up his board. It's nice because his creatures are, are kind of small so we can hang. He draws up to five cards, we're at zero, he draws another Siphon. Down to eight cards, he's down to eight cards, so we gotta keep that in mind. So depending what we're, we're drawing in the next few turns can help us decide if we wanna go more aggressive or stay a little bit more defensive and hopefully deck him out. We get the veteran proc again. Captain proc, sorry. Here we just want to clean up some of the board, like I said before. With some pretty decent sized creatures. Just to prevent any shenanigans when he tries to swing back, because he just won't have enough creatures to do enough damage. Draw another card from his deck. However, it was a demon of some sort. Six cards in my head. Sure, gain another six life. He's back up to 22 life after being at five. Crab is what he drew. And it's gonna have the double fatal infection. It's not looking good for us. Oh my gosh, another tree. Okay, so I think we still attack in here. I don't attack with the other one one just because we want to be able to have a blocker or a prop getting if we need to. Here we know these guys are going to die. We're just going to place it with the yak and then have a the gate back up. Trying to play around, turn the stone. Sure, gain another six life. Back up at 20. And trading with the yak here is good. for games like these. Down to two cards. And boom, we left the arena. Really good game against a, a Raska player. Those games, you just really gotta uh, battle it out and be patient. Yeah, and here's the deck. The only glaring differences would be the two invoke the Dons, which does give a friendly creature, a random creature in your hand, and the next creature you draw plus one plus one. This creates those those crazy arowana turns where you get one more arowanas. It also buffs up your two powered guys so you can actually get through the walls of chases. Really has found this very, very key to a lot of the wins. Big shout out to Traska. His playtesting with us really convinced me to add this into my deck. The other two cards were the negates. So negates, this could be swapped out for either one other Geist or one other Fair Fight. So anyone you choose is good. We like to run two negates just for the fact that, you know, it's nice to counter a wizard spell book. It's nice to counter an extractor while playing Jace. Sometimes this will even work in the mirror where you get to counter a Divine Smite or an Aura of Courage. Uh, overall, it's still a good deck, has good play against a lot of decks, and has decent play towards Jace. You have a few more days. I wish you all the best of luck. Go get some wins. Go climb that ladder. Hopefully I stay number one, but I know I got some clanmates right behind me. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, share the video. And 
I will see you next season. This is Bucksville now.